Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wiryawan, and in today's video, we're going to talk about micro four thirds focal length. Let's go. Before we continue with today's video, if you are a current subscriber of my channel, welcome back. I hope that you will enjoy this video and thank you always for your support for my channel. And if you are a new viewer of my channel, also welcome. I hope that you will also enjoy today's video. In my channel, I talk about photography, filmmaking, micro four thirds camera lenses, as well as music, home recording, guitar, rock metal, that kind of stuff. So if you are into those kind of things, please consider subscribing to my channel. And now let's continue with today's video. In today's video, I want to talk about focal lengths, which is a very confusing topic when I first started to learn about photography. However, today I want to explain a little bit about focal lengths, specifically for micro four thirds. My goal with today's video is so that you can understand better about micro four thirds focal length so that you can better choose the right focal length for whatever you are photographing or filming out there. Please keep in mind, I'm not a professional photographer. I'm just doing this whole photography and filmmaking thing just for a hobby. So I'll be speaking from my personal experience and from whatever I have learned so far. Before we talk about the focal lengths themselves, I just want to briefly explain about an important thing that I need to address, which is equivalency, because equivalency has come up in my video comment section a few times. Now, speaking of equivalency, a video made by Tony and Chelsea Northrop a while back mentioned about this, and they mentioned that basically the focal lengths and the aperture stays the same. It's just the sensor that is cropped, and I agree with them. However, if you want to explain your focal length to somebody who are using a full frame camera, then you have to multiply the crop factor of your camera uh, to the focal length as well as to the aperture to mimic both the angle of view and the depth of field. For example, if you are using a 9mm f4 in micro four thirds in full frame, it will be 18 millimeter f8 so you multiply the focal length and the aperture by two to be more precise there are other things that you need to multiply besides the focal length and the aperture when it comes to crop factor but i won't touch into that matter in this video because it's gonna be too long for this video and for now let's just keep it right there anyway now let's talk about the focal lengths themselves focal length is basically the angle of view of your lens or in simpler terms, how zoomed in or how zoomed out your lens is. The focal length of a lens is indicated by the millimeter number on the lens. So for example, right here, I have an Olympus lens and it says 75 millimeter, and that is the focal length. So basically, the lower the number, the wider the angle of view is, and the higher the number, the tighter the angle of view is. So nine millimeter, like this one, is very wide and 75 millimeter, like this one right here, it's very tight. Besides the angle of view, focal length also affects two other things, and they are the depth of field as well as perspective. Speaking about depth of field, the longer the focal length is, the less depth of field that it will produce. So basically, the defocus area will become more blurred. On the contrary, the wider the focal length is, the more it will produce depth of field. And what that means is the wider the focal length is, the more area will be in focus. Now, speaking about perspective, the longer the focal length is, the more everything will be compressed and squished. Things that are far away will look closer when you are using longer focal lengths. On the contrary, if you are using wider focal lengths, things that are far away will push to become even further and more distant. So things that are far away will look smaller in the frame. So to recap, focal length affects angle of view, depth of field, as well as perspective. And now let's talk about the focal lengths themselves and how I use them. And I will also provide sample pictures on every focal length that I explain. First focal length is ultra wide. Anything that is wider than 10 millimeter, 
for example this guy right here olympus 9 to 18 millimeter and then also my favorite right here lawa 7.5 millimeter f2 and also some other lenses like the panasonic 7 to 14 millimeter olympus 7 to 14 millimeter panasonic leica 8 to 18 millimeter and so on so this focal length has the most amounts of depth of field and also it pushes the background far away and i think this focal length is perfect for landscape photography and scenery as well as if you want to include as much things in the frame please be very careful when you are using this kind of focal length because it can really exaggerate the vertical lines imperfection on your picture besides landscape and scenery once in a while, I'd like to use this focal length for street photography. It's not really a normal thing to use ultra wide focal length for street photography, but I managed to do it at least once and I'm pretty happy with the result. Next focal length is normal wide. So in micro four thirds term, it's anything from 11 millimeter all the way to 16 millimeter. For example, this lens that's recording this video right now is the Panasonic Leica 15 millimeter. And then this guy right here, the Panasonic 14 to 140 millimeter, the wider end at 14 millimeter is still considered normal wide. And also this guy right here, 12 to 35 millimeter at the wider end, 12 millimeter is also normal wide. So this focal length still has a lot of depth of field, but now in terms of perspective, it's not really as exaggerated as an ultra wide. So things that are far away still looks far away, but not really too small. And now everything looks more proportional like our eyes. And I really like to use this focal length, especially for traveling, because it is really a general purpose kind of focal length that you can use to capture anything from a little bit of street photography, environmental portrait, food photography, as well as a little bit of taking picture of the sceneries, you know, stuff like that. It's very flexible, it's very versatile, you can use it for almost anything. I really love this focal length because there's still lots of depth of field, and as I mentioned earlier, the perspective looks about normal, like our human eyes, and that means that the picture generated from this focal length can provide a lot of context or environment information. So if you are traveling or if you're out and about, the picture will provide you with a little bit more story in it as opposed if you are shooting it with a tighter focal length. Next focal length is normal focal length anywhere between 17 millimeter to 30 millimeter. Like for example, this Panasonic 20 millimeter and also somewhere in the middle of this Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter or somewhere in the wider end of this 14 to 140 millimeter. They're all considered normal focal lengths. This focal length is really great for a little bit of general purpose photography, but I think it's better for product photography, food photography, a little bit of tighter landscape, and especially this is really good for street photography. This focal length produces less depth of field when compared with normal white. So your subject will become more prominent and the background or the area that is not in focus will become more blurred so that the subject is stronger. And I think this is the strength of this kind of focal length. However, there's still context in the picture and the perspective still looks normal. There's not a whole lot of compression or squishing of the background. So I think this is a really good in-between focal length between normal wide and light telephoto. So this is a very flexible focal length if you have a hard time trying to decide between normal wide or light telephoto. Next focal length light telephoto so in micro photos term this is anything between 35 to 50 millimeter for example the telephoto end of this 12 to 35 millimeter right here is at 35 millimeter that's light telephoto and also this guy right here 45 millimeter that's light telephoto as well and also somewhere in the middle of this 14 to 140 between 35 and 50 it is light telephoto as well this focal length is excellent for portrait, especially half body portrait, but it's also excellent for product photography as well as for tight landscape where you want to isolate your subject. In my personal opinion, this focal length is not really that good for street photography because while your subject is stronger, 
because there's less depth of field and the area that is not in focus will be blurred. It doesn't provide too much context. It just looks like a candid picture, you know. However, if your main purpose is to isolate your subject to make your subject stronger in the frame, then this is the perfect focal length for you. Also, please note that at this focal length, there's already some kind of compression going on with the perspective, meaning that the background will look closer and bigger as well. Next focal length is medium telephoto. Anything between 60 millimeter all the way up to 100 millimeter in micro four thirds term. So for example, this lens right here, Olympus 75 millimeter, and also this guy right here, Panasonic 35 to 100. So anything between 60 to 100 on this lens is medium telephoto. In my personal experience, this focal length is excellent when it comes to very tight portrait, for headshots, for close range wildlife photography, for tighter landscape when you really want to isolate your subject and compress the background or to bring distant mountain closer in the frame, then this is the perfect focal length for you. Unless you are shooting something that is very far away, then the background here is gonna be very prominent and you'll get a very thin depth of field, meaning that your subject will be in focus and very strong and prominent in the frame. And it will also give you less context about the environment. The benefits of using this focal length is that the compression is already strong. You can squish the background, your subject will look more dominant, but the focal length is still a little bit forgiving when compared to ultra telephoto. You can still frame the subject easier and it's just much more pleasant to use than ultra telephoto. However, let's move on with the next focal length, which is ultra telephoto. Ultra telephoto in micro four thirds is anything longer and tighter than 100 millimeter. For example, this big guy right here, this is 100 to 300 millimeter. This is an ultra telephoto focal length lens. This focal length I think is perfect for wildlife photography or just anything that is far away that you wanna bring closer in the frame. To be honest with you, I don't really use this lens that much except for the occasional concert photography and photographing the moon, moon eclipse, solar eclipse, and that's all. I don't really use it for anything else. And the reason being is because it is a very long focal length and when you zoom it in all the way to 300 millimeters, every little vibration in the camera, in your hand, in the lens will become recorded to your picture and it'll make it blurry. And if you record a video without the stabilizer, it will also become blurry and, you know, jittery and not pleasant to look at. However, if you do wildlife photography, sports photography, concert photography, as well as photographing, you know, things that are far, far away, I think this is a great focal length for you to have. And that wraps up today's video. So that is all for today's video. I really hope that you find this video to be useful. Please comment down below and share to me what is your favorite focal length and why. Also, if you have questions about anything in this video, feel free to comment down below and I will try my best to answer them. Also, don't forget to support my small channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. It will really help me a lot to motivate me to keep making these videos for you. So that's all. Thank you and goodbye.